Welcome to the HyperMesh 2023 introduction videos. This video is about model and analysis setup. You will set up model properties, define two linear static subcases and a modal analysis subcase, and start the solver to create results. Open the model for this exercise and start by the steps to assign properties to elements. You may use the model browser to create new entities like materials. Select the appropriate card image, then enter the material details in the entity editor. Do the same to create a property. With the good card image, select a material, then enter the thickness value. With a right click on the property, you can assign it either to elements individually, or to all elements of a component. However, let us take a more automated way to assign properties to elements, and before doing so, undo our property creation. The Map Thickness tool allows to choose to map thickness to nodes, elements or components. In the Advanced section, you can control further details like the precision of the thickness assignment. Then select the original, volumetric geometry as, source, and the elements to map to as, target. By thickness color, and 3D display of shell elements is turned on automatically, allowing you to easily check that respective properties were created and assigned. Select all properties, to add to them the still missing material assignment. Save the current state of your modeling as HyperMesh model file. The next things to define for a complete input file, are loading conditions and output controls. Start by creating constraints, to hold the structure in place. Take care that those degrees of freedom which are intended to be constrained, are checked. Constraints are listed as loads in the browser, and organized in load collectors. Rename the automatically created load collector and give it a color of your choice. Create another load collector which will store a force that will be created next. Create the force not from the ribbon, but from the loads entry in the model browser, which will make a difference in loads handling inside HyperMesh. To define the force, first create a node set from inside the entity editor, and select the node for it on which the force shall act. Then enter 500 units as magnitude and verify that global Z is set as direction, called N1, N2, N3 here. The browser allows to turn on and off the force display, to check its correct organization. Create another load collector, to organize a second force we want to define as acting separately from the one just created. Select the existing node set for the location of the force, then define 1000 units as magnitude and use the vector tool to define the direction as parallel to the profile.
To define the first force as acting together with the constraints as one event, create a load step of type linear static. Then select constraints and force through their load collectors. Do the same for the second force you created. While the analysis setup would be basically complete now, we add cards to control the results output of the analysis. Start with requesting the stress to be output at nodes, additionally to the defaults. Then add output of the forces at your constraints, which allow for a common sanity check of your loading definition. The linear static subcase definitions are complete with this. Now move to setting up a modal analysis as one additional subcase. First thing to add is through a load step input, the card EIGRL. In this, define three modes as to be extracted. Then create a load step of the type normal modes, where you select the existing constraints as SPC and the EIGRL card as method, struct. With this, the setup is complete. Save the current modeling status as hypermesh model file. To run the analysis directly from hypermesh with the solver optistruct, check that the default name and location is good and use the default export output settings. In the compute console, use the solver options to define four CPU cores as to be used by the solver. When the dialog reports the analysis as being completed, you can use the button, Results, to start the post-processing application hyperview with the results file loaded. Here, let us not proceed this way, but use the multiple window option of the session in which we created the analysis model. For the second window, select hyperview to be the application. Then load as model the fem file, which is the solver input file. And as results, load the h3d file, which was written by the solver, containing the requested results. Before hitting apply, set the result math template to advanced. The results are now available for post processing, with for example the contour tool allowing for color display of displacements or stresses. Details on post-processing will be shown in further playlists and exercises. Complementary to the video you just completed, two breakout videos are available. One deals with model checks, the other with editing a model. Thanks for watching.